you ever think what is the probable explanation how abhimanyu while still unborn could have heard the conversation between his mother and father that is arjuna it is given in great indian epic of mahabharata written thousands year ago let's talk about it so before starting with embryology of ear we must know about the parts of ear so let's first talk about parts ear divided into three parts that is external ear middle ear and inner ear the external ear consists of auricle which is also called as pinna and external auditory canal middle ear which consists of tympanic membrane which divides middle ear from external ear and it also contain bony ossicles and there is eustachian tube and inner ear which contain bony labyrinth that is cochlea and membranous labyrinth let's come over here that is embryology of ear so we have to understand the pharyngeal arches there are five pharyngeal arches first second third fourth and sixth the fifth one is disappear soon after formation each pharyngeal arches is formed by three germinal layers the first one that is endoderm which form the inside of pharyngeal arches which is indicating in yellow line ectoderm which form the outside of the arches indicating in blue line and in between two there is mesoderm each pharyngeal arches have its own blood supply and nerve supply between these two pharyngeal arches there is a cleft on ectodermal side and there is a pouch in endodermal side look over here this is the model of growing embryo and at the next side there is a structure which is called as auditory vesicle so let's talk about how this auditory vesicle is formed at the time of growing embryo there is a formation of thick epithelium and it start invaginating inside which is called as otic placode after some time span this invagination goes inside and form otic pit further this there is a completely separation of this otic pit into otic vesicle from external epithelium and this otic vesicle undergo further differentiation and form membranous labyrinth and membranous cochlea which is derived from ectoderm now this otic capsule is surrounded by mesoderm so the mesoderm thicken and form the otic capsule which differentiate and form the cartilaginous framework of inner ear that is the bony part of inner ear look at this diagram so what happens to this pouches and clefts so the first pouch start invaginating inside and form eustachian tube similarly the first cleft start invaginating inside and form external auditory canal the site where the first pouch and cleft meet which is the site of formation of tympanic membrane so remember that tympanic membrane is made up of three germinal layers around the external auditory canal the first and second arch form the hillock of his let's talk about hillocks of his it is formed by first and second arch the first hillock formed by the first arch and remaining hillocks formed by second arch so these all hillocks fuse and form the pinna the tragus which is formed by the first hillock and incisura terminalis it is the line of separation from first and second hillocks let's revise the embryology of ear so first in external ear there is a pinna which is formed by six hillocks of his external auditory canal which is formed by first cleft in middle ear tympanic membrane which is formed by three germinal layers eustachian tube which is formed by first pouch in inner ear the bony part which is formed by otic capsule and the membranous part which is formed by otic vesicle the cochlea is developed sufficiently by 20 week of gestation 
and the fetus can hear in the womb of mother. This probably the explanation how Abhimanyu while still unborn could have heard the conversation between his mother and father. Thank you.